What's going on everybody? This is an episode from the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast. Do you like podcasts and you want to see the full podcast? Make sure you check out the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast on all your podcast platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, among many others. But you're listening to the episode right here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that like button in below and make sure you hit the subscribe button to NC Studios and NC Level Up for all your gaming needs. This is the Nerd Coalition. Enjoy the show. We are at the final episode of Dark Side of the Ring. This, excuse me, the season finale of Dark Side of the Ring. And of course, they ended with this guy. And it is, the episode is called The World According to Marty Jannetty. What a fitting title. It's a very fitting title. This, this is, it's kind of like a, just a, basically breaking down Marty Jannetty's career and how how f- fucked up he truly is and the majority of it is his fault absolutely now prime used to send me all the time all the he would be like yo this man Mario genetic got something that's going he would send me all this random stuff prime do you remember the stuff that you used to send me that that right that Mar- 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 it was come from Mario genetic's account it's hilarious yes when it came to you know the uh his what was it his black door that he wanted to have sex with, I that was the that was one that one and the guy the guy dying is the craziest one. Yeah. Oh, we get to that in the in the episode. <laughs> they 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 actually talked about it. So we are gonna st- you know start start from the beginning of all Hopefully things. Hopefully he don't keep it D himself. What'd you say? Hopefully he don't keep it D himself. Oh, he. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the, in the I beginning, that was about the lady sketch. If she got, if she caught it. Oh, I caught it. Yeah, oh, I caught thanks. It. <laughs> he was, he was good at wrestling. Like they, they, they talked to like two of his doctors. I don't know the like the specialist names. It, I think he said uh, he was a orthodont- orthopedic surgeon. Yeah, he talked. He talked to the two of them because um, well, they, those are the wrong doctors. So you need to talk to his like therapist. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all need to be talking to a head doctor. I'm sorry. Seriously, because with, with this one, he, 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 when we see him, he's in a wheelchair, and I'm just like, "What the hell happened to, uh, you know, to to Mario from being a wheelchair?" Well, he rolled his ankle pretty bad, and I mean, this roll, I'm probably gonna, gonna say cop roll, out. But it, did it come off and he put it back on? Because that did not look like a rolled ankle. And, and, I, and oh, it, it's been really bad. He hasn't gotten the proper care for it. I don't think it was, but. It's like it's it problem they show it. It's like swollen and scarred up and everything and it's just disgusting to look at. It it, it was rough. I was like, bruh, um you you should go talk to somebody about that. And and, he, and his doctors were saying, Look, oh uh, when when the narrator was asking him not narrator, that's Jericho, when the when the interview the was at the producer was asking him, Hey, how much pay you date Marty's? He said twelve. Off rip. He ain't even hesitate. On a good day. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> can you guess who the talking heads are in this? In this? Oh, I know it's not Shawn Michaels. <laughs> no, it ain't Shawn, but they they they, they got uh, Al Snow. Okay. They got his ex girlfriend Karen, who time has <laughs> not been kind to her. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah, at, at all, she looks. She's they all look rough. rough. Brutus Beefcake and his wife. She had no purpose of being there, other than he just probably wanted his, his, his you know, his wife there to show off. I guess, you know, his wife. Props, whatever. Uh, <laughs> then they had uh, what is it? Not was uh, uh wait, wait, okay. It was is there is there anybody that's an authority figure? You mean like, you mean like, like on a Vince level? No. Like a no, like a like a Bischoff or like a. Oh no! Uh, no. There, there's no Cornette. Bischoff. Okay. There, there's no Russo. T- please, we. I had enough of them from 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 last week. Yes, because that one, I was just like, I don't need to see neither one of y'all for a while. I about to say, I I, I had enough of that bash at the at the beach stuff from last week. So, um, he was talking about how he was in high school. He was a good athlete, and one day. That he was in chemistry class, 
And he, you know, as a kid, he was young, we started to mix the chemicals together because the, his words, the teacher didn't tell me what they would do if I did mix them. So he mixed like this, this orange chemical and this blue chemical. Prime is all about the reenactment. <laughs> the reenactments in this episode were ridiculous. It's all about the reenactment because he puts the stuff in there and it explodes, right? And it just explodes mm-hmm. in his face. But there's this this girl on the other side of the science table. It explodes and she flies away and disappears in the smoke cloud. <laughs> this is the reenactment. We didn't see her again. I said, wait a minute. Well, he explodes these chemicals. I mean, they probably were taking liberties. It was like, hey, well, I mean, hey, you might as well do something insane. But look, I'm surprised they, I'm surprised they didn't take liberties in the uh, new Jack one because that would have been the one I would have, I would have did crazy stuff. You know, oh, like, like, really I didn't try to keep it grounded, but I was like, but you know what? Because new Jack was season keep two. Keep it grounded. Yeah, because look, at that time, we was it was on season two. Then that and that at that time, that was the only dark side anything. So and, and look, there would be no dark side of the '90s. 2000s comedy football if it wasn't for Dark Side of the Ring and the success of Dark Side of the Ring. So I feel so like maybe they was trying to, you know, like keep, keep, keep it tame, keep it grounded. But then it's like, okay, we got there's a Dark Side of everything on Vice now. So everything is successful. They're like, oh, we're going to blow to the wall. Be like, because this season, the reenactments have been very, very much. They've been over the top. Over the top a lot. Like the one where, who kicked somebody's eyeball out? That was the Dork the Clown one. I was like, yo, and then they actually showed the eyeball go flying in the reenactment. I said, y'all get on my nerves. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my gosh, well, I want to see him do a Vader one now. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, uh, his friend Karen was just like, look, the, uh, it's hard to believe any shit that Marjorie says. She at literally all. said, take everything he said with a grain of salt. Uh huh. Which is wild. So. In this episode, they do got enough people to talk about his stories. To you do about this? Hey, this happened. Mm-hmm. May not happen this way, but but this happened. What was you about to say, Prime? I'm gonna say real quick, r- randomly. I remember I went to a WWE event, and for some reason, the Miz was feuding with Shawn Michaels, and he said, "Well, you know what? If I can't beat Shawn Michaels, I'm gonna beat the next best thing." And then he fought Marty Jannetty, and I was like. Why am I watching this right now? Yeah, well, I think that was in 2005. Because no, nah, I want to. They were in 2005. It was because because they did they did talk about his WWE return in 2005. No, it's not when it was it was Shawn Michaels in DX at the time. Oh, okay. It, it, oh, so like oh six oh no, it could have been. It could have been okay because it, it it was a rough, it was a rough time. Don't worry, because whenever whenever the men's transition, that's when it was. He he transitioned a lot. You talk about from, when he transitioned from Hoorah? the from the from the one with the shorts to the tights. He had on he had on the tights. Okay. Well, so whenever he changed to the awesome gimmick, that's when it that's when it was. They uh, talked about his little, his family life a little bit, saying that his mom was very abusive. She used to beat him. His dad was more of a soft dad. He was a very nice guy. And his his childhood friends and everything that was on there was talking about how nice his dad was. But his mom was very abusive, and she would wait till he'd go to work or something like that to beat on him. That's and funny. he never told his dad that, you know, what his mom was doing because he didn't want them to break up. That's, that's yeah. insanity. It is. Uh, he th- he talks about times when he was like thirteen, and he according to Marge and Daddy, like I said, this is the world according the to Marge because he is in a world all his own. That he slept with his therapist. I missed that. I must have been cooking in the yeah. kitchen at that part. Cause and what? So then, when he breaks out to the rest of the business, he goes and he meets his as he calls his little dirty kid named Shawn Michaels, overall name Michael Shawn Hickenbottom. And they become the Midnight Rockers in AWA. And they get, uh, Pat Patterson is viewing them and then they get signed by WWE. And uh, because, 
you know, uh, it was like Pat Patterson was telling Vince about him. Vince like, we'll, we'll bring him on. So to celebrate them being signed by WWE, what do they do? They go to the bar, and uh, according to Marginetti, Jimmy Jack Funk comes up and says, "I heard y'all two were partying because they they had a reputation for for party, as you already know, Pa." Well, was you about to say something, Prime? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just. I was. I was. Oh. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> when you said they go, to, they went to the bar. I was waiting on. The, I was waiting on the lock. I was gonna say, not nah, Michael Hickenbottom. Not, not, not Michael Hickenbottom. No, he wouldn't do that. And then so he was. He, he, he wanted to see how how they party because they kept their distance from the boys and everything like that. So Michael was like, "Well, well I can, I can do this." And smashed a, a a beer bottle over his head, and then they just started. Be- beating each other up and doing wrestling moves in the bar and shit and just and just doing some crazy ass party and shit. Got them fired the next. And week. got fired. Grand opening, grand closing. <coughs> they got fired after one week. They had then so after they got fired, we go into this chapel right, and it's margin that he was like, I'm going to explain to you what Gat is, and he ain't talking about the gun. I just. He's to, he wants to introduce us to what Gat is. And Prime, I think I remember I told you this before, didn't I? Uh, you can be telling me. Yeah. He, 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 it's, Gat stands for God's Amusement Toy. So, w- whenever God gets bored, the, the, these are Marty Janetti's words. Whenever God gets bored, he just sends some lightning bolts to Mario Gennetti to fuck with him just to make him laugh. Yeah, okay. Do, are you hearing this part? I mean, he didn't strike him with lightning yet, so I mean... No, so in, in other words, yeah, so he just like, all the bad little things that happen, it's just get that happens. Because God just picked on Marty Gennetti out of 7 billion people. God picked on Marty Gennetti and said, yo, I'm bored today. Yo, that sounds about right for Marty. <laughs> yeah, we got me out of everybody in the whole world. And Husky Al Snow was on there. It was just like, he got nothing to do again. This is all, this is this is a a, a, a tool. So Marty Janetti has had to take responsibility for, for the shit Marty Janetti does. Several other people right behind that come up and say, he doesn't take accountability for anything. It's everybody else's fault. And I'm like, bro, it... Yeah, it, it, you know, and uh, and and the thing is, even his friend was like, "Look, do do I think that Marty had some bad luck? Sure, but when it comes to this, you know, it's just like it's like he has a black cloud over his head. And he just keeps it on a leash, and it was, it was. I was just like, oh my god! So, uh, Continental Wrestling signs them, but eventually, after they keep seeing the town, Vince wants them back." Cause you know what I'm saying? Because they, they're, they're very talented. And once again, for those who don't know, Marge is actually really good in the ring. Ooh, I, that's he's good for the, for the early 90s. For, like, he had a great 2 out of falls match with Dorn. He has some, he has some good matches. He, he can work. He can work. I'm not saying, you know, that... Uh, when, he's, uh, when he's not sober. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so now they're not, they're no, they're no, they're no, no longer the Midnight Rockers. They're just the Rockers. Uh, to uh, to Takata uh is is a wrestler that used to wrestle the Rockers a lot, mm-hmm. and he was and he was talking about his time with Marty. We talk about times where they'd be partying. He he would lay down on the on the couch, and Marty would just start firing a gun. This man was just to, shooting up a room to wake him up, and he said. He, he that doesn't up. sound like me. That don't <laughs> sound safe at all, do it? I wasn't going to say that, but you know what? Yeah. Let's go with that. And he was, and then he would wake up and he'd be mad, but then he realized that one day he had shot holes through his car. And they got mad at, at uh, Takana because he was just like, if you would have stayed awake, I wouldn't have to shoot the gun. Like, Why do I got to uh, shoot the gun? What? Why do I gotta shoot the gun to wake up? Period. High off his ass. They, they, they went out list of drugs that they know of that that uh, Marginetti has been on, from crack to cocaine to 
some type of uh, I, I don't know the you know the actual name of it, but is it like like a tranquilizer type of drug? Mm. He been all that kind of crap. Uh, but when it came to him and Sean, they did everything together. They had, you know drank and did women and uh, party and everything together. Then December 11th happens. They do a, a taping on uh, WWE Superstars. And there's this guy by the name of Chuck Austin. Who is there. And they're doing a tag team uh, match on this taping of, of Superstars. Chuck Austin only had six months of wrestling experience. Okay, so I did they say that in the special? So, no, you, I, you, you got, got to do a little reach, do a little Okay, because I was like, yeah, I don't uh, remember hearing that, but it will make sense. Like, bro. He only had six months of wrestling experience, and WWE brought him in and just to do this do this match and offered him, I think, a couple hundred dollars to, wow. to, do, to do this match up with the Rockers. So, uh, I, I probably I don't know if you're familiar, but Marty J. Fishman was, was the rocket dropper. Which. <laughs> Would <laughs> sound dumb, right? But it, it I mean, uh, uh, wasn't a uh, wasn't um honky tonk the rocket dropper or something like that. The honky tonk was the rocket drop. I mean, well, I think so. Well, it wasn't his little the little net breaker. No, no, that was the shake rattle and roll. So who had was that? Mar-J Jared had, or Mar-J was, or doing, was, 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 doing, was doing the rocket dropper. One of them. One of them. Somebody else had another move called the rocker something. Well, I well, I had a shake, rattle, and roll like like the honky tonk man, but his was a, uh, you know, dancing punches. Uh, but so what happened was he he's supposed to do the rocket drop on Chuck Austin. Chuck Austin, when well, he was going for because it's like you're supposed to just bend down and then Janae just jumps so you just fall flat on your face. He like stands straight up, and then comes right down on his head and breaks his neck. Sir, like what? Hmm. Comes right, and they, they show the footage. He comes right down on his head and breaks his neck. His legs is crossed. He, he got no mobility. And so, Mario turns him over. Sean does a splash. He doesn't touch him because, you know, like you said, Sean's a professional. And they win the matchup, but he can't move. So, Chuck also sues him and sues uh, WWE. And uh, even in uh, <clears throat> they, even in the courtroom, they brought out Matt and brought First of all, I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just you just see him take that move off. Yeah, that's definitely his fault. First of all, second of all, uh, that's uh, that's that's like a <laughs> that's the two thousands divas finisher. If I if I know, <laughs> it. he said two thousands divas finisher. Mm-hmm. You got that. You got the X. The uh, what is it? The, the, the X, X factor. factor? The, oh God! You got the that. Factor. The X factor and slap number two. Those yeah, oh, the, the, oh, the three used to call, these, finishers from the two thousands. Remember they used to call it the women's special slap. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ. They, they used to call it the women's special. Slap. So they found WWE. Uh, so he sued them, and. They even brought the match and had Dean Malenko and have him show them what the move looks like, and the jury did not care. Of course not. They was like, the video. What did the video <laughs> say? So, they found WWE uh, F at the time 90% liable, mm-hmm. Chuck Austin 5% liable, and Marjane 5% liable. Isn't that crazy how law works? So, they said, according to Marjane, he said they should have for uh, $10 million. And, uh, but he said first, you know, the jury awarded him twenty four million, and then Mar about to sit up and say, "You said ten million, but the jury was about to tell him that he got to calm down. Uh, we, we're going to appeal it." But uh, and, then, and what ended up happening after the appeal, they it's, they said ten million, mm-hmm. and Mar was responsible for paying five percent of it, which came out his royalty checks. So that that's what happened with that. So <laughs> after a, after they moved on from. Uh, the Chuck Austin incident. Uh, let me see. Make sure I, I'm, I'm getting. Uh, uh, Kate brings up because they had a reenactment. It's like Sean didn't have to do worry about none of this stuff because Sean wasn't liable. Oh yes, because he wasn't. He didn't actually give the movie. Yeah, um, and, and the, the reenactment shows Shawn Michaels walk out the courthouse and just shrugs his shoulders and watches that and keeps on walking. Like, I'm telling you, these, sucks to these suck, reenactments were on one. 
it, it, it was hilarious. He said, it sucks to suck. So, Karen talks about how much she hates Shawn Michaels. She ain't and he was arrogant about him. and egotistical, and the HBK was really him, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, because they was piling up on Sean a lot in this episode, especially because of the ass kissing, but, I, I, you know, like, prior, Brutus B. Kick was talking about ass kissing. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> All right, booty man. <laughs> you say he called a booty man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, because you know who ass he be kissing. And still kiss to this day. I mean, he got to keep the jobs. Job alive. I'm about to say, Hope Hogan sits out with a smooth ass every day. Okay, so that's how it is. I Actually, no. About... One, one, it's going to sound wrong. One chick is Jimmy Hart. The other chick is Brutus Beefcake. So. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, oh, no. And then you got, you got Eric Bishop up the crack. That's how I go. That's how I go. They, uh... You talk about how bad drugs he's on, that he and he would pass out and care about. Should I call the hospital? They'd be like, no, don't call the hospital. And he's got to kind of wake him up himself because, you know, that's how fucked up Marty was. And it, it got so bad that in a hotel, they talked about this fight that they had, and they was arguing, and Sean pushed Marty out the window. Take one more step. step. I'm kicking this out, out the, the motherfucking window. Fucking window. He falls out. He said, "Lucky they was on the first floor." And he just fell in some bushes. And he fell in some bushes, so he got back and said, "You think you can do that again?" And they start fighting. They just start scrapping. And then Sean get his ass kicked. According to him. Now, now, here's the thing: I can believe that because in any other shoot fight, Sean Marks has got his ass kicked. Now, I know you remember. I know you remember the bar story, don't you? <laughs> the which, which was. The one with Sean guys ass beat by the Marines. Yeah, it's okay. That's the one. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I was ready, sir. Okay. When he then he came back, he lost a smile. Like, come on now. Sean was getting his ass beat. Now nah, he got shit. beat by the Marines and came back on TV with like a busted face. They was like, "What's going on? What's going on?" That, that's right. He he st- <laughs> he start. Sean did a lot of that shit, but Sean was out of fight. He got his ass kicked. So uh, Marty was like, "That was the reason why Vince wanted to break us up." And it was like, you know, Vince said, I see Sean as a star, and, you know, you're not quite there yet. And that's why everybody started talking about stuff. So, you know, Sean was kissing Vince's ass and shit like that. I'm just like, Bro, are y'all kidding me? Some people just have star quality, and I can tell you for sure. Marty Jannetty did not have that. Yeah. He didn't have it. And then they go to the barbershop segment. Where uh, it all happened, and we know how the barbershop thing came out. Because, you know, Jannetty... Was being a coward and ran through the window to get away from Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Bobby he says that, why? Why would he say that? But then uh, he talked about when Shawn gave him a stiff kick. He said he kicked him so hard he even feel the he glass. Feel the glass. I was like, dick. I was like, that was kind of that's hard. <laughs> that's hilarious, actually. <laughs> so now, did it any much? But what happened? For this wrestling match, they were supposed to have a match at Mania Eight. Mm-hmm. And remember, <laughs> supposed to. what you say? I said supposed to, but you know, Shawn Michaels had the Michael it up. <laughs> no, or no, I, well, not all the time because mm-hmm. now, because there was a couple early WrestleMania, like why Shawn Michaels had a per- match with this person, but he uh, had, had like Shawn had a match with the Matador, and because Marginetti got in trouble with some strip, strip, uh, stripper, a stripper who was doing drugs. It was really, it, 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 they found the pack on him. He got arrested, so then he was out from that. Then they had a match at the Royal Rumble, uh, in '93, I believe it was, and it was it didn't live up to expectations, to to a lot of people. They was, they did, they was gonna have another rematch at WrestleMania Nine when they was in season Palace, but then he got into more trouble because this is what keeps going on with Marginetti. He just keeps finding ways. Now did they did they go to the store? Did he say anything about when Sean framed him? When Sean framed him. Yes. They did not get into that. They did get to a part where he, he he took the cops bike in India and drove it into the into the hotel lobby. And had it some... on tape and everything. Cause yeah. sir, what? They, they was in India. He took. He said, hey, "Can I ride your bike?" And the cops were like, "Like okay." I guess. And then he, I don't even know why the cops said okay. To be honest with you, and that was my first thought. Why would you say okay? No. And he drove that shit in the lobby and uh, ran somebody. He skipped some. He drove it up the steps. Right. Then they open the door he, he and did. he drives it he into did. the lobby. He did. Yeah. 
and that's I cannot be listening to I cannot be listening to the dark side of the ring. I'd be like, you did really you drove it up the steps. But here's the thing: they have it on foot, have it on camera though. <laughs> and he runs his bike right to some guy, and knocks him right into that you know the, the, that little fountain that they have in the hotel. I was just like, get him in jail. <laughs> they had uh, the the new rockers with Al Snow, and he said that Marty. Wasn't really feeling it because you know he gave it all because that, that wasn't you know the thing and obviously it, it was just there just to to be there but I was like I remember when Alston was doing that barely did everybody knows what the Alston we talking about he goes to WCW but he gets in trouble with the law and then he loses his license for ten years and WCW WCW just said just let his shit run out it's cool and because we not going to even bring him back anyway uh and he was going down on some hard times. But then, Sean gets saved. Hallelujah. Remember when, Sh- remember when Sean Michaels, you know, Philippians 414, that was going across, uh, it says that he, he got saved, and he's like, hey, what God did for me, God did. he can do it for you. So, he helped bring back, uh, reconnected, and brought back Mario Gennetti in there, because remember they had that, that little Rockers reunion on Raw 2005? Probably talking to you on this one. Yeah, yeah, I remember they had that little that little short reunion. Yeah, it had it had the, the short reunion. They, he actually, and the thing was, Janetti was actually looking pretty decent in the matchup. And then, so after the match with Will, they were talking about signing him to a contract. But then he got into a fight with his girlfriend at that time. The police were called, and and then he put him on parole. And then house arrest cost him the job. <sighs> Like this is all gat, by the way. Yeah, yeah. This is like, like, like the fuck. And he could he, like that. that and they they would say like that was like his like his last time. So then they go into as he got know that he's been still trying to do indie shows that he can't do, especially on that angle. And then he goes into his social media stuff. Jesus. Which goes into the stuff that like they they, they put up screenshots of the things he said. Talking about Michelle Obama, how he got thirteen black kids he can't be somewhere. Racist. He got some. He got thirteen black kids somewhere. How he wants to, you know, have sex with his his, his daughter, that, which he that he claims that he got hacked on that account. Oh, that one, just just that one. Oh, right, hacked. right, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he got hacked. He, he 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 didn't know anything about that at all. But then getting the, hacked and being high is not the same thing, sir. But then the biggest one comes of all. The one that Prime actually sent me. I remember the day he sent it to me. It was in the chat and the first thing Prime said was, Yo, did this man just really admit to murder? And I read it and it talks about the old Facebook post of how he uh, was being attacked by some guy who was, uh, and he, as he kept saying, trying to get in his pants, and he made a guy disappear. Really, at 13 years old. That's, th- I... And all of a sudden, the law was going to check him, like, okay, like, is this really true? Did this really happen? Like, what's, what's going on? We're going to look into this. And, uh, so, the producer was just like, okay, look, Hypothetically, hypothetically, this happened. How would it have happened? Yes, hypothetically, this, this had happened. Could you tell? He's like, okay, hypothetically now, right? Because according to him, he was working a wrestling storyline to try to get uh, back into the uh, the business. And this is in the twenty twenties. Yes. Mm-hmm. He takes him back to the old bowling alley that it happened at. Shows where the guy w- was pulling at him, and he's like trying to get into his pants. And you know and he had to kill him, and then there was there's a river behind those trees, and they said, should we call the cops? So the cops, you know, they'll just be they'll just be dumb. We're just gonna go and just toss him into the river. Well, they searched the river, and uh, they haven't found anything. Yeah, they claim uh, that they they went and looked at all the allegations, um, but and nobody was reported missing at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So. But uh, it's that's how it it, it it ends off of that. Talking about that, you know, I've also got to mention, you know, the uh, that hotel fight 
and there, there, there was a little Macho Man thing in there because uh, in Shawn Michaels' book, they were saying that Roddy Piper instigated the fight, mm-hmm. and Marty had said that too. And they said when he got into the fight, and he was beating his ass in the hallway. The cops came up and wanted to arrest them, but Macho Man came in and was like, you know, what's going on in here? <laughs> and the cop was just like, oh, wait, hey, you're Macho Man, he said, he said, hey, they're not fight, they're prepared for a match. That's how we do it as wrestlers. We got to prepare and go over so it's going to go on the match, which got them off. Crazy. And Macho Man gave the cops some more guys and anything. You know, you know how cops do when they see a celebrity shit today, like they don't know. They were like, oh, my God, you're Randy Savage, but, you know, you're my son's favorite. You know, and I'm really your favorite. You know, shit like that. And that's how that episode ended. That's how the world, according to Mario Gennetti, ended. This shit, oh, I was like, this shit's crazy. They definitely had a season finale. I'll tell you that. Yeah, they saved the best for last in this case. Yeah. That mean the- it's delusional. I mean, you really could do a two-part thing about all the shit that's going on in Marjorie's life. You really could. But, the, you know, but it didn't. But I was like, but I was like, this, this man is legit insane. And yeah. He got, him, he got himself to blame for that. And probably... See, uh, a lot of wrestlers are the same, but they don't have, like, drama. To, like, for example, Sabu is insane, but he don't have no drama like that. So it's like, I don't know if the dark side about Sabu would be nice because he ain't really getting in no, like, trouble like that, but, like... He's done some crazy stuff that I kind of want to hear about. <laughs> you know what? I, I I understand what you're saying for that. I, I don't like I said. I, I, he could have got some some crazy shit, but we just haven't looked at looked it up. But I don't know. It's a po- it's a possibility, but we just don't know. 